when you're shopping for tea, uh, there's kind of a couple routes you can go. Uh, there is bagged tea in a little tea bag, and then there's uh, loose leaf tea. Uh, bagged tea comes in a wide variety of qualities. Uh, when you're looking for a tea bag, um, one of the things you want to consider is how much space is in the bag. Uh, tea, once it's uh, brewing, is going to expand at least four times the size of what it is right now. So you look at the current amount of tea in there, and you look at the space. If this is not at least three times this, uh, it isn't a good bag. And this one is not the best. Uh, as far as expansion goes. Uh, that's an okay bag. Um, one of these, on the other hand, is a lot better uh, for a couple reasons. And one is, you'll notice, uh, tea's fitting like there. It's got plenty of room. Well, this is a little pyramidal one. That's a corner, and then you got three corners worth of space for it to expand. Uh, the other thing to consider is how much, is what uh, quality of tea is in there. Uh, <clears throat> the highest quality stuff is going to be in the whole leaf, uh, or lo whole leaf variety. Uh, this right here, I'm about to pour, that's the, this is kind of the lowest uh, grade of full leaf tea. Uh, that would be considered uh, either broken orange pico or orange pico. Uh, uh, Lipton of Lipton fame uh, came up with the uh, grading scale for tea, and some of it doesn't make a lot of sense. But Orange Pico is the blend of teas put into Lipton tea. Uh, it means uh, some of the tea comes from India, some of the tea comes from uh, uh, Sri Lanka. In, tea, in the tea biz, it's still called Celion. Or, yeah. So, <clears throat> you'll see. Orange Pico. Uh, Celion in India, assuming it's not blurry as all get out. Uh, in my little bag here, if I dump the contents of it out, do 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 do. Snip. I get these for free, so I don't care. I dump this out. You'll see much, much tinier bits. This is somewhere between fannings uh, and, yeah, this is kind of fannings. Uh, the little white bits, so you know, is some white sage. Uh, this is a, this is a uh, tea from a different company. Uh, it's got some blackberry flavoring in there and some white sage, so the white it, it's supposed to be there, don't freak out about it. But uh, this would be considered fannings. Uh, this is a grade lower than that. And I thought I had a terrible bag of tea around here somewhere, but I don't. Uh, the lowest level is going to be called tea dust, and it is nasty. Uh, the only advantage the uh, fannings and the tea dust have over the whole leaf is that these brew faster. Uh, all the little antioxidants and uh, compounds with the anti-cancer uh, production or anti-cancer and anti-cardiovascular disease and anti-Alzheimer's stuff that you would get from tea, it's not going to be as readily present in here as it is in the whole. Uh, they have, uh, whenever you buy a little teapot or, here's a teapot. Whenever they buy little teapots, uh, they usually have some kind of brew basket in here. Same rule applies. You want at least four times the volume of the tea once it's sitting in there. 
Uh, this one's good for that. Um, the other thing you want to consider is you want a really, really fine mesh. And this one is not so fine. Uh, a fine mesh means you don't have tea chunks in your tea when you sit down to drink it. So, uh, I'd normally use an infuser basket, but for demonstration purposes, you don't need it. You can just brew directly in the pot. Uh, just use some kind of filter uh, when you actually pour it to get all the chunks out, unless you're really good about pouring. Uh, I'm going to use that teapot that I already... I'm going to use this whole leaf here. So first I'm going to... <clears throat> toss out the old here. Bloop. Then I'm going to grab my pot. I'm going to pour directly in. <clears throat> Just like that. Uh, the rule tends to be uh, if you got an actual teaspoon not the teaspoon you'd put on your table but you'll notice this one uh, kind of a deeper and then less an opening there uh, you want to use one of those kind of like that for every five or six ounces of water you're going to use so I'm going to throw in a second just for taste purposes and I'm going to fill this up with water and then we'll talk in a second. There are different types of tea out there. Uh, Orange Pico here is an example of black tea. That means when they pick the tea off the uh, tea bush, they uh, let it fully oxidize. Uh, that means it goes from green leafy color to black color. Uh, <clears throat> there are green teas which they pluck it and then they steam it immediately. That shuts down the catalase enzyme that would push the oxidation happening. Uh, there is white tea, which is a special kind of green tea. Uh, it's the very, very tippy top of the bush on the first day of plucking season. And then they steam it like they would a green tea. Uh, there's also oolongs, which are kind of crazy. Uh, they pluck the leaf, they let it oxidize part of the way, and then they steam it. Uh, that makes that makes some makes it kind of work where it's somewhere in between. Uh, and those four types are the types of tea that is actual tea. Um, there are some kinds of tea. Those little bunny ears uh, that isn't from the tea plant. Um, herbals, um, <clears throat> we tend to group them as herbals or, oh, I forget the fancy smancy uh, French word, but there's a fancy smancy French word. Um, <clears throat> red teas are kind of popular. Um, it's, it's not a tea plant tea, it is a, <clears throat> it is a tea-like substance made from uh, same process with an African, South African bush called red bush. Uh, it, it's got, they, it's supposedly got a kind of naturally sweet taste. I don't particularly like it, but that is there. Um, and then there's other herbals. Uh, chamomile's popular for trying to get to sleep. Uh, peppermint's popular for uh, digestive purposes. And tea takes relatively well to throwing extra stuff in there, like my little fan bag of fannings. At root times, uh, <clears throat> for green and whites, uh, you want 180 degree water, Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Uh, 180 degrees Fahrenheit water. Uh, green White teas will brew somewhere between a minute to two minutes. Uh, and yes, it's that fast. Um, green teas will go somewhere between two and four. Uh, black teas like this will go somewhere between three and five minutes. Um, and red teas will go, or red teas and herbal teas will go somewhere between five and seven. Uh, 
oolongs are weird. Uh, if you're going to go with an oolong, follow the uh, follow the uh, seller's directions on that because they should know what it is better than you do or I do. Um, but with black and reds, you can go uh, 210 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just below boiling. So get the water to a boil. Uh, <coughs> and then take it off, it'll cool that two degrees by the time you can get it set up. Um, and those are just kind of the recommended things. You like your tea stouter, you can brew it a little hotter or brew it a little longer. Um, with white teas, uh, they get real, real acerbic, real, real. Tea's also got some, uh, some of the antioxidant vitamins in there, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K. Uh, it's got some threonine, which is an amino acid that helps uh, it helps the caffeine work. Uh, black teas will typically have about 25 milligrams of caffeine per six ounce serving. Six ounce serving. Uh, green teas will have somewhere around 12 to 15 and white teas are kind of in the 510 range. Um, doing decaf on tea, you can do that at home. You don't need to buy, uh, you don't need to buy fancy smancy real tea uh, or real decaf tea if you don't want to. What you're gonna do, you're gonna take the first uh, 30 seconds to a minute, let it steep, drain out the water, replace the water, and then let it steep the rest of the way. Caffeine pulls out first into it. Okay. There we go. Uh, I could fill it up a little bit more, but perfectly serviceable. And like I said, whoa, steam action. Uh, <laughs> don't breathe this. Wait, I'm not talking about blending stuff. Uh, if you can see over the steam, that little tea there has bloomed to pretty much fill up the bottom of the uh, pot there, and then some. There's some in my little bag here. I shake it. There you go. Uh, I should have made sure to point that out sooner. Uh, Alright, so, and again, if you can drink it without, uh, if you can drink it without uh, cream and sugar, uh, it's essentially calorie free. Uh, and uh, that's kind of it, as far as I can think of. Um, I don't know where I'm going to throw this in the course, but I don't even know how good this was. Um, but kind of planning to do at least a couple more of these. Uh, so, look for them. Okay.